everyone. Welcome to Wind Down Wednesdays. I'm your host, Paula Taylor, and this is episode 61. So I don't know about you, but I had a super stressful day today, and I feel like it was the universe's way of reminding me that this topic we're going to talk about tonight is really important and something that we encounter on a daily basis. So tonight we're going to talk about managing and clearing stress. And I want to first start by talking a little bit about integration, because this work that we do, this spiritual work, is cumulative. And these shows are actually cumulative. And as I say every week, you don't have to have watched all 60 episodes in order for this to make sense. But if you're really doing this work, then in order to level up, as my friend Sarah likes to say, it really is a cumulative process. And much like in a video game, you might be going around and collecting your tools. We're collecting spiritual tools and learning how to use our spiritual tools. And then we then we integrate. And, and that's what my friend calls leveling up. So when you look back over a period of growth that you've been in and you start to recognize, oh, this happened and this happened and this happened and you have these aha moments, there's this process, there's this period of time of integration, of really putting all that together in your mind, of things kind of coming from the mind space down into the body and into that visceral understanding that we get when we get out of that headspace and kind of down into the emotional and physical bodies. And so this show tonight is a little bit about integration. We're actually going to kind of integrate some of the concepts that we've been talking about over the past few months as we talk about managing and clearing stress. And I just wanted to mention that because it's important and because if you think about it in terms, I actually like the video game analogy because growth is not constant. You know, you might play a video game and get stuck on one level or even one part of a level for like months if you're really into gaming, if you've really decided you want to like conquer a level, right? You might have to go back a level because you missed something. If you're gathering things that you need, you needed a tool and then you get up the next level and you're like, oh, I don't have that tool. I'm going to have to go back. So there's some kind of backtracking. There's some stuckness that happens. There's definitely some periods of time sometimes where you feel like you're kind of spinning your wheels, you're like running on a hamster wheel and you're not making any progress. Sometimes you find a shortcut and you jump like three or four levels and then you ha realize you kind of missed something and you have to go back and do them anyway. Or sometimes you jump levels and you're like raring to go and then you keep going. But ultimately, we are always growing. We are always leveling up. Even if it doesn't feel like it, even if we feel like we're stuck, as long as we keep doing this work, as long as we keep collecting our tools and bringing clarity and expansion and harmony into our field more and more and more, then we have this process and this opportunity to integrate, which is that leveling up, which is that understanding of kind of what's happening. And, and that's a little bit where this topic came from this week. And I think it'll make more sense as we get into it. But I wanted to introduce that idea. I'm obviously into integration. My book is called Spiritual Integration. So it's my favorite part of the process. I've been kind of in a period of integration. And, and the only bad thing about integration is that I noticed myself, especially yesterday, starting to kind of go, oh no, like once I complete my integration, then it's like I'm I'm starting all over again at a new level and all of these new challenges will come. And, and as someone said to me a few weeks ago, as you level up, your challenges also level up, right? As you get further on in your video game, things get harder. And, and it's meant to be that way because you're ready for it. Your challenges level up because you've leveled up. But it can be a little bit overwhelming and, and it can lead a little bit to that idea of like, I was like, oh, but I'm in such a good place and, and then I'm going to end up having to, it feels like starting all over sometimes, it really does. But noticing the sweetness in the process, taking time to rest and renew, we're going to have a really nice relaxing meditation tonight. All of that makes this whole process a little less daunting. So this idea of talking about stress specifically this week came 
after a conversation I had with my mom and, and we were talking about kind of the state of the world and the country and, and just a lot of things that have been going on. And we were talking about how hard it is not to just get completely overwhelmed by that stuff. And so we're going to we're going to start by talking about that. But I want to point out that there there's layers of stress. So you've got personal stress, stress within your own body and and field. Then you've got your kind of personal stress bubble. And that's all of the things around you that you deal with on a daily basis, work, school, family, friends, social circles, maybe your church, other things in your community. That's kind of like your your personal bubble of stress. And then we go out from there to, you know, larger issues of community stress, of national stress, of global stress. And that's a heck of a lot of stress. And I don't think most of us realize that we're constantly in a state of overwhelm. And we're going to talk about that from a couple different perspectives tonight. So this idea of, of all of this outside stress, anything that's outside your personal space, my suggestion for this, and I'm going to say this, and then I'm going to laugh at myself because I know this is way easier said than done, but especially the further out you get in those layers, the farther away from your own personal bubble you get, we need to let that stress go. And... I want to be really clear about this. Absolutely, when it comes to things like global issues or national issues, political issues, social issues, anything that you feel passionate about that and that is why you tend to get overwhelmed by it, do what you can. So stay informed, absolutely. Vote, donate if you have the funds to donate. Volunteer if you have the time to volunteer. Become an activist. But even within those things, then we need to learn to let it go. We hold on to so much. And essentially, if you're not right within yourself, then the further out you get in that bubble, the less effective you're going to be. If you're not really de-stressing within your own personal space and with your within your own bubble, the further out in those bubbles that you get, the more layers of overwhelm there are and the more likely you are to just shut down. And the other thing I want to say about this kind of global stress or worldwide, national, whatever way you want to think about that, it's okay to take a break. Absolutely be informed. I am never going to tell you not to be engaged with the greater world because that's part of our spiritual work. But a big part of our spiritual work is knowing when to step away, knowing when to take a break. And when you are taking a break, the best thing you can do is to refocus on yourself. And this is not selfish. It sounds selfish. And someone might even tell you this is selfish. Oh, you're not paying attention to the plight of such and such and such. You're just focusing on yourself. That's selfish. No, that is transformative. Focusing on yourself and really working on yourself is transformative and that ripples out. It ripples out into your immediate surroundings. It ripples out into your personal bubble of stress. It ripples out into that wider bubble and eventually it ripples out and changes the entire world just by focusing on yourself. And I have kind of an example that that happened to me this week. And I, it, it's hard to, sometimes I have a hard time with words lately, but I did a Kundalini class a couple days ago and, and I did the class for me. I was like, I feel like I need some Kundalini yoga. I knew exactly what I kind of was looking for. I found the class in my uh, online subscription that I have. And at the end of this class, this whole class ended up being about building love and opening the heart space. And, and interestingly, I've mentioned my shoulders. I'm going to talk a little bit about my shoulders a little bit more tonight. But, but by the end of this class that I did for me, there was so much love emanating from me. There was so much love built up in this energetic movement that we spent the last five or six minutes of this class sending that love out. And, and I, it was such a powerful, 
I knew it was going to happen. It was such a powerful experience to, to have that extra love to give because I took care of myself, because I gave that love to myself, my cup of love was spilling over and I had all this extra love and I sent that love out to the people in the world who are suffering, to the women around the world who are suffering, to the children in Canada who have been recovered, to the people in my immediate surroundings in my smaller circle that I know are struggling and I wouldn't have that love to give if I hadn't started by working on myself. And that love that I gave out, we may not see the ripple of that, but I know that makes a difference. And if five people do the same thing, it makes five times that difference. If 10 people do it, it makes 10 times that difference and so on and so forth. And, and actually I think it's more of like an exponential growth, which is why it's so powerful to meditate together, which is why I kind of started this whole practice of having a group collective practice because the sum of, of all of us together is greater than our individual parts. When I did that class, even just with the teacher, and, and it was a recorded class, the, the energy that she built through me replaying that class, along with my energy, multiplied and rippled out even more than it would have if, if I had been in isolation. So when you're feeling overwhelmed by that stuff that's outside of yourself, come back to yourself. It's not selfish. It's transformative, not just for you, but, but for the world at large. So the other thing I want to talk about tonight is personal stress, that kind of stress within and, and around our immediate bodies in our own field. Because that's really the only, that's the, as we talked about, I think that was last week, the only thing you can really control is your response to things, is your internal environment, your external environment in terms of the energy that's just around your body, that's part of your personal energetic field. You can't control someone else's energy and, and you can die trying, like literally, it's not worth it. Focusing on yourself, focusing on de-stressing yourself, again, is transformative for you but it's transformative for the people around you. That energy ripples out. And in that way, you have the power to inspire change rather than trying to control change, which is what so many of us, including me, have been doing for so many years. So I already said this, I'm gonna say this again because it's really important. And especially in terms of that personal stress, that day-to-day -day stress in our everyday lives, most of us are in such a state of constant overwhelm, we're used to it and it feels like it's part of us. We no longer even recognize it as stress. It feels like a part of our body that's just always been there, like the, the holding patterns that we've talked about in the last few months of, of carrying tension in your body, for example. So that's one of the things I'm talking about. I'm talking about letting go and I'm talking about clarity. And, and these are shows that we just have done in kind of like over the last month or two. All of this stuff is, is going to contribute to what I'm talking about tonight. So when we've forgotten that we're carrying stress, we don't recognize it as stress. We have these patterns of holding tension in the body. It feels like part of our own body. And, and so we start to ignore it. We don't have awareness. And then maybe we are aware of it, like, oh man, my shoulder's really hurting today, oh my gosh. And we immediately kind of start thinking, what did I do physically? And, and that's reasonable, of course it's reasonable. But, but then that doesn't give us clarity. We talked about how important clarity is. So clarity is about looking under the surface of what's going on, man, my shoulder hurts. Why does my shoulder hurt? And like, yeah, maybe I, I did a yoga practice yesterday and I kind of tweaked something in my shoulder. But also, my shoulders hurt all the time. Why do my shoulders hurt all the time? What is going on underneath that? I need clarity about what's going on there. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about my shoulders. And I talked several weeks ago about being an empath and how everyone is sensitive to energy, whether they're aware of it or not, whether they have clarity about that or not. And so we develop these patterns of protection. And that's just another word for tension. 
So almost every single person I have ever worked on as a body worker at this point, hundreds or thousands, maybe hundreds, I don't know, lots of people I have worked with have the same physical pattern of rolling forward. And I talked about that several weeks ago about how, yes, that is a physical pattern that comes with being at a computer. It comes with driving. All of those things absolutely contribute to this. But energetically, that is a pattern of protection. And if you start to pay attention, like I've been paying a lot of attention to my shoulders the last week or so after I had this kind of integrative revelation, when I hold my phone, for example, I tend to hold my phone like this. I don't have to do that. I could absolutely hold my phone with one hand. I could hold my phone out in front of me. I could prop it up on something. So yes, there's a physical pattern of holding there, but it, that's just a continuation of the energetic pattern of that feeling of needing to be protected. So at the root of stress, at the root of our physical tension, which is most of it is just stress that we're carrying around in our body, is safety, is feeling unsafe. And, and this was a big revelation for me. I, I talked over the last year or so, I've been working with this deep core belief I had about worth. And I really thought, silly me, I thought, that was my big core belief. Once I once I conquered that belief, once I once I changed that belief, once I addressed that belief, like I would be good to go. I would be in my power, and and absolutely, I leveled up when I conquered that belief. It was huge. But then I figured out that underneath that belief is another belief that I am never safe, and I think that most of us have that belief on some level to the extent that it interferes with our daily activities in the form of holding, of holding stress, of feeling overwhelmed, of carrying stress in our bodies, which also leads to disease and disharmony, of holding stress in the emotional field, which is part of the body. So that's more holding in the body. And for me, it was, it was pretty, again, it was pretty revelatory. I, if you had asked me, I would have said, oh yeah, of course I feel safe. Mm -mm. I don't, or I, I haven't. And, and that's, that's my next core belief that I'm working on. So let's talk a little bit about stress. We've talked about stress before. We did a whole show about stress and ease where I taught oxytocin breathing. I would absolutely suggest that you go back and watch that if you haven't, because oxytocin breathing is a fantastic way to transition out of that sympathetic into the parasympathetic nervous systems. Well, what is the sympathetic nervous system? So that's what we call that fight, flight, or freeze mode. And, and all of that is safety, right? And, and the root of that system physically was about physical safety. And the example people always like to use for whatever reason is like confronting a saber toothed tiger. So back in the early days of man, when you were confronting a, a saber toothed tiger, your adrenaline kicked up, you went into the sympathetic response because you were trying to survive. There was an animalistic need to survive and you went into the fight, flight or freeze mode. Fast forward, however many hundreds slash thousands of years, and most of us are in sympathetic mode almost all the time. And here's the thing. Physically, we're a lot safer than we were in the caveman days. Physically, absolutely, there are threats to our safety. And there are times, you know, I, I've gotten almost into a car accident or something like that. And then your adrenaline kicks up and that flight or flight comes and you kind of start shaking and stuff. But really, physically... We don't have a lot of control over whether we're safe or not. I mean, we could make good decisions, you know, that we have control in that in that way. But for the most part, most of us are pretty safe and we're letting fear kind of convince us that we're not. But for the most part, and and absolutely I don't want to be flippant here because some people are not safe. Some people are in a home environment where they're not safe. Some people don't have a home, but, but someone like me, when I, the people who are probably watching this right now, 
most of us are fairly physically safe. So what has happened is that our emotional, our feelings of emotional safety have kind of hijacked this reptilian brain, this reptilian system that was really meant to like get us away from the saber toothed tiger. That was really all that this was meant to do was to keep us physically safe. Our brain doesn't know the difference between emotional safety and physical safety. So when we feel emotionally unsafe, our stress response kicks in. We go into sympathetic mode. When we think we're unsafe, not, not physically maybe true, but we think we're unsafe. Like when I walk into Costco, I'm pretty safe. I'm as safe at Costco as I am in any other store. But when I walk into Costco, I feel unsafe. And, and so I get overwhelmed. And so that fight, flight, or freeze kicks in. And then my stress kicks in. And then I hold even more. And then I leave Costco. And then there's a little bit more stagnation and and gunk in my shoulders and in my upper back and maybe in my belly and my chest. So we're going to talk tonight about how to address that. So we start holding. We don't know how to clear that holding. We're going to talk. We talked about clearing. Again, this is an integrative episode, so we're building on a lot of things we've talked about. So we start holding, we've talked about patterns of holding in the body before. We don't know how to clear that holding. So then it gets worse and worse and worse. And then the body gets trained to stay in a state of stress. And this is the revelation that I had a couple of weeks ago when I was thinking about my shoulders and I was thinking about protection as an empath. And I was thinking about how I don't really need that protection. Spiritually, we never need protection. Spiritually, we are divine. And and when we clear all the gunk out of the way and that div- divine energy flows through us, we are protected. We need no protection. Our soul is eternal. Our spirit is eternal. So even if our physical body dies, we go on. Our soul outlasts us. So when you look at it that way, even physical safety there's nothing really to be afraid of. Now, of course, getting that knowledge kind of from your conceptual mind into your body is is a completely different story. And we're going to work on that in our meditation tonight. But essentially, we need to retrain ourselves that we are safe. Because most of us feel unsafe all the time. We feel unsafe with other people. We feel unsafe in our own homes. We feel unsafe being alone with our thoughts a lot of times. Sometimes that's the least safe we feel. And I thought about talking about addiction and then this, we could go on for like hours and hours and we may come back to this. But a lot of what addiction is, is is that fear of being alone with your own thoughts, that fear of being alone with that kind of spiritual hole in yourself that that you haven't learned how to deal with, that you haven't learned how to fill with spirit. That's the only thing that can fill it. So... That causes stress. That causes a feeling of being unsafe, being too quiet, being in the dark. All of these things, our bodies are trained to be in stress all the time. So we need to retrain our bodies. And this is a process. Absolutely, this is a process. And as I was doing some of this work myself, I kind of identified an early memory that that made me feel unsafe. And perhaps the earliest memory I understood where I felt unsafe. And so I went back to that memory as we've done kind of in meditations before it. And I, and I dealt with my little Paula self and I told her like, look, we're still here. I'm old now. Look at me. It's been 40 years, 35 years, however long. And you're still alive. You've made it. So let's release that stress because I've been holding that feeling up unsafe of not being safe, of unsafety, I don't think that's a word, anyway, been holding that feeling of being unsafe in my body since that memory, which was like, you know, five, six, seven years old early. And then building on it and building on it and building on it. No wonder my freaking shoulders hurt. (laughs) They're full of 35 years of stress. And so we need to bring awareness to this. We need to clear this from the body And then we need to retrain our brain 
our mental space, our emotional space to really understand that we are safe, that we are always safe, that our soul is eternal and that we are safe. So we need awareness of our patterns. We need to bring clarity to the underlying issues beneath those patterns. So in my example, I needed clarity. Oh man, my shoulders don't just hurt for no reason. They hurt because I'm, I have a pattern of holding tension here. And underlying this pattern is this protection, is this feeling that I'm not safe. Even when I'm sleeping, I kind of sleep like this and I've been working on that. But again, this is a lifetime pattern that I've been carrying and I know I'm not the only one. You may be holding your stress in a different part of your body or in, probably in multiple parts of your body. But as I'm talking about this, you're probably like, oh yeah, they're in the neck or the shoulder. A lot of times it's the neck and the shoulders. It could be the legs, it could be the hips, you know, it could be the low back, it could be the feet. A lot of people have plantar fasciitis. That's kind of a, a pattern of holding tension as well. So what we're going to do in the meditation tonight, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself, okay. So we, we need awareness of our patterns. We need clarity about the underlying issues, which as I just mentioned, is that, that feeling of being unsafe. And then we need to expand through spiritual work. And that will bring us back into harmony. That will retrain our minds and our bodies that we really are safe. And here's the thing, even if you're not safe, if you encounter something that is unsafe and your body is in ease, is in the parasympathetic, you're going to think more clearly. You're going to react and respond more calmly. So stress doesn't really serve us. I mean, if your kid is trapped under a car and you need the adrenaline to lift the car up, okay, the stress is serving you. But if you're in a situation where you're walking and you think someone is following you, Panicking is not really going to serve you. Calmly taking a breath, looking around, figuring out where you can go for help, you know, taking your pepper spray out of your purse, doing all these things in ease. And, and even in a situation where you are physically unsafe, if you have trained yourself to be in ease, you are going to be more effective than if your body is already so overwhelmed and so exhausted from the adrenaline that's always kicking through it, that you don't have anything left. There's actually something called adrenal fatigue, which means that your adrenals have been working in this sympathetic mode, putting out so much adrenaline and cortisol for so many years that they're just like, I can't do it anymore. And, and they sort of give up and it makes you get sick. And I think a lot of us have some degree of that. So... Whew. Let's counteract that tonight. Let's clear some stress. So in our meditation tonight, we're going to start with some physical relaxation. So the first step to relaxation is usually grounding, is getting fully into the body, getting your, your energy out of the mind space, out of the brain, out of the area above your head where some of us are floating coming back fully into the body because we can't have awareness of our patterns if we're disconnected from our bodies. And a lot of us are disconnected from our bodies. So the first step is getting connected with your body so you can have awareness about the, the pattern of tension. So we're gonna zero in on some tension tonight. We're gonna do some clearing with sound and breathing as we have over some previous weeks. And then we're gonna reintroduce mantra. We haven't used mantra in a really long time. But mantra is extremely powerful. It's, it's an affirmation. Affirmation and mantra are kind of cousins or brothers or sisters. They're very close. Mantra is a repetitive phrase that's, that's meant to bring focus and relaxation. And, and you can use an affirmation as a mantra. And that's what we're going to do tonight in that part of the meditation. So I'm going to present a mantra to you. You can speak the mantra out loud. That's the most powerful thing to do. You can think the mantra, but whatever you do, be active with this. This is not a situation when I'm just going to say it and you're going to kind of like let it come into you for the sound clearing. Absolutely. But for the mantra, be active. And if my mantra doesn't resonate with you, if it doesn't ring true, if something else comes to you, then use your own mantra. 
the mantra that I'm going to use is I am safe and my soul is eternal. And I've been repeating that to myself now for a week or so, maybe a little bit more or less. And, and I feel it in my cells when I say I am safe and my soul is eternal, my body goes, Oh, okay. That's right. It's true. And my emotions go like, oh, okay, that's right. It's true. And my mind goes, are you sure about that? <laughs> but if you keep repeating that enough times, your mind will go, I am safe and my soul is eternal. That's true. And I've seen that. I changed that core belief about my worth. And now when the, the mind starts to trick me, when the ego comes in and says, you're not worthy, my mind has been trained to say, no, wait a minute, that's not quite right. Let's look at that. Let's bring clarity to that. And, and then I'll use affirmation or mantra to kind of bring myself back. Because the mind, the mind can be trained. The mind is kind of like a little dog or something. It just needs repetition. It needs positive reinforcement rather than punishment. We punish ourselves enough. We don't need to add any more punishment to our lives we need to be gentle with the mind, but we need to be firm with the mind. When, you're, when your dog keeps peeing on the carpet, you're not supposed to rub his nose in the carpet. He doesn't understand that. You're supposed to stop him, take him out, and say, pee pee outside, or whatever your word is. So that's kind of what the mind is like. The mind is like a little puppy that likes to wander off, that likes to get itself in trouble, but but ultimately we love our mind and we wanna work with our mind. So retraining the mind Mantra and affirmation is a wonderful way to do that. And affirmation really works the best when you're in that state of meditation, when you're fully in the body. And you can use it all the time. I mean, the repetition is important. But, but stating it, as we talked about intention a, a week or so ago, stating an intention from the bottom of your belly, from your body itself, is the strongest way to state an intention. And that's the same thing with affirmation. Ah, all right. So let's meditate together. Ah, so the whole purpose of this meditation tonight is to be really relaxed, is to de-stress. So get into whatever position feels the most relaxing to you. If that's lying on your back, if that's curled up in a little ball on your side, if that's sitting up, just be really supported and comfortable. If you're sitting up, you might want to rest your back against something. You might want to put something under your knees if you're lying on your back just get really really comfortable let yourself feel really supported here and know that you are supported you're supported by the earth you're supported by the divine you're supported by the other people doing this meditation with you and begin as we often do with some nice deep oxytocin breaths breathing in through the nose directly down into the belly, letting that belly get nice and big, and then sighing it out through the mouth. <sighs> that sound vibrates the vagus nerve. It helps bring you into that parasympathetic. If that's the only tool you ever use to de-stress, it's a powerful one, that oxytocin breath. So take two or three more of those nice deep oxytocin breaths. Settle into the position you're in. If you need to shake your body a little bit, move around a little bit, just get as comfortable as you can. And we're gonna scan down through the body. And as we do that, just pay attention to the areas of tension, the areas of holding in your body. Allowing the top of the head, that crown chakra to open and calling in that beautiful, divine, unconditional love into the top of the head letting it come into the scalp and the skull, into the brain and the face, letting that beautiful light of divine energy flow into the throat and the neck and the jaw, and inviting any tension to release as you do this from that neck and jaw, from that head, 
coming now into the shoulders and the upper arms, letting that energy flow in to the elbows and the forearms, the wrists and hands. Noticing tension here, inviting anything to release that's ready to, but not getting stressed about it. If the tightness stays, that's fine. Calling this beautiful, relaxing golden light into the chest and upper back now, into the abdomen, into that mid back, the low belly and low back. Taking nice deep oxytocin breaths if you're called to, letting this beautiful, relaxing light flow into the hips and the pelvis, letting it come into the thighs and the knees down into the shins and calves, the ankles and feet. And now coming back in your awareness to the area of tension that most called you this evening, you can come back and repeat this meditation over and over. So just choose one area for tonight. And if that tension releases, if it clears, you can always move on but bringing your awareness to an area of tension, taking a nice deep oxytocin breath, drawing that breath, that oxygen, that life into these muscles, into the tissues that are holding stress, and then sighing that out, releasing it for the highest good. Anything we release through this meditation, we do for the highest good to be recycled and upcycled for the highest good. Allow yourself to bring any movement or sound that calls you to help loosen up this area, to help stir up some of this energy as we did when we were clearing last week. Let that energy begin to move. Let it come unstuck. And remind yourself that you're very safe you're very safe in this space. Your body is safe. Your mind, your heart is safe. And if nothing's moving, if everything's still feeling stuff, stuck, don't worry about it. Just keep breathing. Keep bringing some awareness, some clarity. Maybe you're getting a sense of the underlying feeling beneath this tension, whether it's fears about your safety or scarcity or worth, all of which is pretty much just an extension of that fear of not being safe. Let yourself really breathe into this tension now. Inviting anything to release that can, but not getting worried if it doesn't. This is a pattern that's probably been in your body for years. Bringing some sound into the space now. Bringing some energy movement into the body. Allowing the sound, the vibration of the sound to shake loose some of that tension, some of that energetic gunk Grounding it out down into the earth to be recycled. Continuing to breathe deeply, inviting 
that pattern of tension to release to the extent it's able in this moment. Letting yourself feel really settled and calm here. As you're ready, very slowly, very gently, bring your hands to your heart space. You can place them flat over your heart or bring them together, palms together at the heart. Just bring awareness to your heart space by touching it in some way. Take a few deep breaths into the space, bring some awareness here. This may not be a place you visit often, so just let yourself become acquainted with this area inside your chest that we call the heart space. This is your energetic heart space. This is where your physical heart lives. And allowing that awareness to connect with the awareness of your belly and your hips here, letting these areas communicate. A lot of times when we're scared, we pull up on the pelvis and cut off the flow of energy down into the earth from the top of our head, from the heart space. Taking a nice deep breath and sighing it out, blowing that energy down from the heart, through the belly, and into the hips and pelvis, into the ground. And as you're ready, we'll introduce the mantra. And you can listen a few times and then start to speak it aloud with me. You can just silently speak it in your head, but let yourself be active with this, whether it's out loud or silently. I am safe and my soul is eternal. 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 Continue to repeat this to yourself out loud or silently. I am safe and my soul is eternal. And notice how this feels in your body as you say it, as you think it. I am safe and my soul is eternal. If this affirmation, this mantra doesn't speak to you, you can change it. Start with I am safe and, and just add whatever comes into your intuitive mind. I am safe and my soul is eternal. I am safe and my soul is eternal. Bring your awareness to that area of tension you've been focusing on and say these words directly into that area. I am safe and my soul is eternal. 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 As you need to, you can take a deep breath Take a nice oxytocin breath. If you're getting tired of speaking out loud, just start to repeat the mantra silently. But keep breathing, keep bringing awareness to your body, to that pattern of tension, of holding. I am safe and my soul is eternal. I am safe and my soul is eternal. I am safe and my soul is eternal. Keep repeating that mantra for a few more moments here. Breathing deeply, bringing your awareness fully into the body, letting go of what you have to do next, what came before this intentionally really powerfully speaking these words or thinking these words into your pattern of tension. 
I am safe and my soul is eternal. 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 Last minute here, keep repeating that mantra. Keep focusing on your pattern of tension. Just for another moment here, keep your awareness at this area. Keep your focus on the mantra. Keep repeating the mantra. I am safe and my soul is eternal. I am safe and my soul is eternal. I am safe and my soul is eternal. the mantra now. Take a big deep breath in through the nose, sigh it out, that audible ha sound, and then just sit for a moment. Notice any shifts in that area of your body. Let them go. Let this area go. Maybe with the promise that you'll return with the understanding that you can't undo many years of tension in one sitting, but that you've introduced movement to this stagnation here, to this holding. And the body will remember that and the body appreciates that. Tell your body now how safe it is. Tell your heart now how safe it is. Tell your mind how safe it is. You are safe and you are eternal. Taking any last deep breaths here that you'd like in any way that you'd like side them out. Maybe you want to shake your body, shake that area of tension a little bit. Maybe you'd like to release some sounds. Your body knows what kind of sounds to make to move that tension. It doesn't want to hold that. It wants to be retrained. It wants you to retrain your mind. It wants you to know that you are safe, that you are eternal, and that you are loved. As you're ready, you can gently allow the top of your head, that crown chakra to close or leave it open for the highest good to that divine connection, to that flow of relaxation, of retraining, of letting go of this chronic stress. Allow that relaxation to flow one more time into the top of your head 
come into your mental space, into that brain, the work so hard that sometimes tricks us to believing things that aren't true. With forgiveness, with love, let that relaxation flow through the brain, into your throat, that area where we speak our truth, let relaxation come into your true center, into your heart center, into that upper back and neck. Let it come into the belly now. Relaxation flowing down from that divine source into the belly, into the low back, into the hips and pelvis. So much ease, so much relaxation here, flowing down into the thighs. This beautiful golden light of unconditional love, relaxing every cell of your body as it comes into your knees and your lower legs, to your ankles and feet. Let this relaxation flow into your internal organs and your belly and your chest into your heart and lungs, to your liver and your digestive system, your belly, your stomach, and your intestines, your spleen, your pancreas and kidneys, and into those adrenal glands that work so hard. Let them know they are safe. Let them know they can relax. Let this beautiful golden light flow directly into your adrenal glands. You don't have to know where they are or what they look like, just send this love into those adrenal glands that work so hard for you on a daily basis. Let them know that they can rest. Let this relaxation flow into the organs of your pelvis, into your sex organs, and your bladder, your ureters, to the lower part of your intestinal system, Allow this relaxation to flow into all the cells of your body that work so hard for you, that tell other cells what to do, that produce chemicals, all of the things, the beautiful homeostasis, the balance in your body that's maintained by the cells, by the organs, by the systems, bringing relaxation into every part of your being now, into your emotional body, into the worry and fear that you've been carrying for so long. Let this relaxation come into this emotional body. Let it come into the mental body. Again, the worrying, the overthinking, the doubt, the distrust. Let relaxation flow in and wash all of that away, even if just for the last moment of this meditation. You are safe. You are eternal. And you are so loved. As you're ready, begin to wiggle your fingers and toes a little bit, coming back into the conscious mind, into this moment carrying this relaxation into the rest of your evening and week, committing to retraining your body and your mind that you are safe, letting go of this stress and this fear. And as you're ready, you can open your eyes. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. That was kind of a long episode, but it felt like an important one. It felt like a really nice meditation. I hope you'll come back and revisit this and continue to retrain yourself. You deserve that feeling of safety. You deserve to be grounded and relaxed in all the parts of your life, in all the parts of your day, in all the places that you visit. Have a beautiful rest of your night. Have 
a very calm and relaxing rest of your week. And I will see you next week for Wind Down Wednesday.